Pope Benedict XVI Latin, Benedictus XVI, Italian, Benedetto XVI, German, Benedict XVI, born Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger, German pronunciation, Joseph Alzi, Atz, 16 April 1927 served as Pope and Sovereign of the Vatican City State from 2005 until his resignation in 2013. Benedict's election occurred in the 2005 Papal Conclave that followed the death of Pope John Paul II. The Vatican announced his withdrawal by bestowing him the title Pope Emeritus shortly after his resignation. Ordained as a priest in 1951 in his native Bavaria, Ratzinger had established himself as a highly regarded university theologian by the late 1950s and was appointed a full professor in 1958. After a long career as an academic and professor of theology at several German universities, he was appointed Archbishop of Munich and Freising and Cardinal by Pope Paul VI in 1977, an unusual promotion for someone with little pastoral experience. In 1981, he was appointed Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, one of the most important dicasteries of the Roman Curia. From 2002 until his election as Pope, he was also Dean of the College of Cardinals. Prior to becoming Pope, he was a major figure on the Vatican stage for a quarter of a century. He had an influence, second to none when it came to setting church priorities and directions, as one of John Paul II's closest confidants. He has lived in Rome since 1981. He was originally a liberal theologian, but adopted conservative views after 1968. His prolific writings defend traditional Catholic doctrine and values. During his papacy, Benedict XVI advocated a return to fundamental Christian values to counter the increased secularization of many Western countries. He views relativism's denial of objective truth, and the denial of moral truths in particular, as the central problem of the 21st century. He taught the importance of both the Catholic Church and an understanding of God's redemptive love. Pope Benedict also revived a number of traditions, including elevating the Tridentine Mass to a more prominent position. He strengthened the relationship between the Catholic Church and art, promoted the use of Latin, and reintroduced traditional papal garments, for which reason he was called the Pope of Aesthetics. He has been described as the main intellectual force in the Church. Since the mid 1980s, on the 11th of February 2013, Benedict unexpectedly announced his resignation in a speech in Latin before the cardinals, citing a lack of strength of mind and body due to his advanced age. His resignation became effective on the 28th of February 2013. He is the first pope to resign since Pope Gregory XII in 1415, and the first to do so on his own initiative since Pope Celestine V in 1294. As Pope Emeritus, Benedict retains the style of His Holiness, and the title of Pope, and continues to dress in the papal color of white. He was succeeded by Pope Francis on 13 March 2013, and he moved into the newly renovated monastery Mater Ecclesia for his retirement on 2 May 2013. In his retirement, Benedict XVI has made occasional public appearances alongside Pope Francis. Early life, 1927–1951 Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger was born on 16 April, Holy Saturday, 1927, at Schulstrasse 11, at 8.30 in the morning in his parents' home in Mark TL, Bavaria, Germany. He was baptized the same day. He is the third and youngest child of Joseph Ratzinger Sr., a police officer, and Maria Ratzinger nay Pentner. His grand-uncle was the German priest-politician Georg Ratzinger. His mother's family was originally from South Tyrol now in Italy. Pope Benedict's elder brother, Georg Ratzinger, is a Catholic priest and is the former director of the Regensburger Domspatzen Choir. His sister, Maria Ratzinger, who never married, managed Cardinal Ratzinger's household until her death in 1991. At the age of five, Ratzinger was in a group of children who welcomed the visiting Cardinal Archbishop of Munich, Michael von Faulhaber, with flowers. Struck by the Cardinal's distinctive garb, he announced later that day that he wanted to be a Cardinal. He attended the elementary school in Aschau M. Inn, which was renamed in his honor in 2009. Ratzinger's family, especially his father, bitterly resented the Nazis, and his father's opposition to Nazism resulted in demotions and harassment of the family. Following his 14th birthday in 1941, Ratzinger was conscripted into the Hitler Youth. 
As membership was required by law for all 14-year-old German boys after March 1939, but was an unenthusiastic member who refused to attend meetings, according to his brother. In 1941, one of Ratzinger's cousins, a 14-year-old boy with Down syndrome, was taken away by the Nazi regime and murdered during the Action T4 campaign of Nazi eugenics. In 1943, while still in seminary, he was drafted into the German anti-aircraft corps as Luftwaffenhelfer. Ratzinger then trained in the German infantry. As the Allied front drew closer to his post in 1945, he deserted back to his family's home in Traunstein after his unit had ceased to exist, just as American troops established a headquarters in the Ratzinger household. As a German soldier, he was interned in a prisoner of war camp, but released a few months later at the end of the war in May 1945. Ratzinger and his brother Georg entered St. Michael Seminary in Traunstein in November 1945, later studying at the Ducal Georgianum, Herzogliches Georgianum of the Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich. They were both ordained in phrasing on 29 June 1951 by Cardinal Michael von Faulhaber of Munich. Ratzinger recalled, at the moment the elderly archbishop laid his hands on me, a little bird, perhaps a lark, flew up from the altar in the high cathedral and trilled a little joyful song." Ratzinger's 1953 dissertation was on St. Augustine and was titled The People and the House of God in Augustine's Doctrine of the Church. His habilitation which qualified him for a professorship was on Bonaventure. It was completed in 1957 and he became a professor of Phrasing College in 1958. Topic. Encounter with Romano Guardini In his early twenties, he was deeply influenced by the thought of Italian-German Romano Guardini who taught in Munich 1946–1951 when Ratzinger was studying in Freising and later at the University of Munich. The intellectual affinity between these two thinkers, who would later become decisive figures for the 20th century church, was preoccupied with rediscovering the essential in Christianity. Guardini with his 1938 tome, The Essence of Christianity, while Ratzinger penned, Introduction to Christianity, three decades later in 1968. Guardini inspired many in the Catholic social democratic tradition, particularly the communion and liberation movement in the new evangelization encouraged under the papacy of Polish Pope John Paul II. At the close of the 20th the future Cardinal Ratzinger would write an introduction to a 1996 reissue of Guardini's 1954 classic, The Lord. <laughs> Pre-papal career <laughs> Academic career, 1951–1977 Ratzinger became a professor at the University of Bonn in 1959. His inaugural lecture was on the God of Faith and the God of Philosophy. In 1963, he moved to the University of Münster. During this period, he participated in the Second Vatican Council (1962–65) and served as a paradis theological consultant to Cardinal Frings of Cologne. He was viewed during the time of the Council as a reformer, cooperating with theologians like Hans Kung and Edward Schilbeeks. Ratzinger became an admirer of Karl Rahner, a well-known academic theologian of the Nouvelle Theology and a proponent of church reform. In 1966, Ratzinger was appointed to a chair in dogmatic theology at the University of Tübingen, where he was a colleague of Hans Kung. In his 1968 book Introduction to Christianity, he wrote that the Pope has a duty to hear differing voices within the Church before making a decision, and he downplayed the centrality of the papacy. During this time, he distanced himself from the atmosphere of Tübingen and the Marxist leanings of the student movement of the 1960s that quickly radicalized, in the years 1967 and 1968, culminating in a series of disturbances and riots in April and May 1968. Ratzinger came increasingly to see these and associated developments such as decreasing respect for authority among his students as connected to a departure from traditional Catholic teachings. Despite his reformist bent, his views increasingly came to contrast with the liberal ideas gaining currency in theological circles. Some voices, among them Kung, deem this a turn towards conservatism, while Ratzinger himself said in a 1993 interview, I see no break in my views as a theologian over the years. 
Ratzinger continued to defend the work of the Second Vatican Council, including Nostra Aetate, the document on respect of other religions, ecumenism and the declaration of the right to freedom of religion. Later, as the prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, Ratzinger most clearly spelled out the Catholic Church's position on other religions in the 2000 document Dominus Iesus which also talks about the Catholic way to engage in ecumenical dialogue. During his time at Tübingen University, Ratzinger published articles in the reformist theological journal Concilium, though he increasingly chose less reformist themes than other contributors to the magazine such as Kung and Schilbeeks. In 1969, he returned to Bavaria, to the University of Regensburg and co-founded the theological journal Communio, with Hans Urs von Balthasar, Henri de Lubeck, Walter Kasper and others, in 1972. Communio, now published in 17 languages, including German, English and Spanish, has become a prominent journal of contemporary Catholic theological thought. Until his election as Pope, he remained one of the journal's most prolific contributors. In 1976, he suggested that the Augsburg Confession might possibly be recognized as a Catholic statement of faith. Several of Benedict's former students became his confidants, notably Christoph Schonborn, and a number of his former students sometimes meet for discussions. He served as vice president of the University of Regensburg from 1976 to 1977. Topic. Archbishop of Munich and Freising, 1977–1982 On 24 March 1977, Ratzinger was appointed Archbishop of Munich and Freising. He took as his episcopal motto Cooperators Veritatis co-workers of the truth from 3 John 8, a choice he comments upon in his autobiographical work, Milestones. In the consistory of the following 27 June, he was named Cardinal Priest of Santa Maria Consolatrice al Tibertino by Pope Paul VI. By the time of the 2005 conclave, he was one of only 14 remaining cardinals appointed by Paul VI, and one of only three of those under the age of 80. Of these, only he and William Wakefield Baum took part in the conclave. Prefect of the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, 1981–2005 On 25 November 1981, Pope John Paul II, upon the retirement of Franjo Sieper, named Ratzinger as the Prefect of the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, formerly known as the Sacred Congregation of the Holy Office, the historical Roman Inquisition. Consequently, he resigned his post at Munich in early 1982. He was promoted within the College of Cardinals to become Cardinal Bishop of Velletri Segni in 1993 and was made the College's Vice Dean in 1998 and Dean in 2002. Just a year after its foundation in 1990 Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger joined the European Academy of Sciences and Arts in Salzburg, Austria in 1991, Ratzinger defended and reaffirmed Catholic doctrine, including teaching on topics such as birth control, homosexuality and inter-religious dialogue. The theologian Leonardo Boff, for example, was suspended, while others such as Matthew Fox were censured. Other issues also prompted condemnations or revocations of rights to teach, for instance, some posthumous writings of Jesuit priest Anthony de Mello were the subject of a notification. Ratzinger and the congregation viewed many of them, particularly the later works, as having an element of religious indifferentism i.e., Christ was one master alongside others. In particular, Dominus Iesus, published by the congregation in the Jubilee year 2000, reaffirmed many recently unpopular ideas, including the Catholic Church's position that, "...salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved." The document angered many Protestant churches by claiming that they are not actually churches, but, "...ecclesial communities." Ratzinger's 2001 letter De Delictis Gravioribus clarified the confidentiality of internal church investigations, as defined in the 1962 document Crimen Solicitationis, into accusations made against priests of certain crimes, including sexual abuse. This became a subject of controversy during the sex abuse cases. For 20 years, Ratzinger had been the man in charge of enforcing the document. While bishops hold the secrecy pertained only internally, and did not preclude investigation by civil law enforcement, the letter was often seen as promoting a cover-up. 
Later, as Pope, he was accused in a lawsuit of conspiring to cover up the molestation of three boys in Texas, but sought and obtained diplomatic immunity from liability. On 12 March 1983, Ratzinger, as prefect, notified the lay faithful and the clergy that Archbishop Pierre Martin Godin Thuc had incurred excommunication late sententiae for illicit episcopal consecrations without the apostolic mandate. In 1997, when he turned 70, Ratzinger asked Pope John Paul II for permission to leave the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith and to become an archivist in the Vatican Secret Archives and a librarian in the Vatican Library, but Pope John Paul LL refused his assent. Papacy, 2005–2013 Election to the Papacy Benedict XVI was elected the 265th Pope at the age of 78. He is the oldest person to have been elected Pope since Pope Clement XII He served longer as a cardinal before becoming Pope than any pontiff since Benedict XIII Benedict and his Polish predecessor John Paul II were the first consecutive non-Italian popes since the seven consecutive Frenchmen of the Avignon Papacy 1309 the last pope named Benedict was Benedict XV, an Italian who reigned from 1914 to 1922, during World War I 1914 On 2 January 2005, Time magazine quoted unnamed Vatican sources as saying that Ratzinger was a front-runner to succeed John Paul II should he die or become too ill to continue as pope. On the death of John Paul II, the Financial Times gave the odds of Ratzinger becoming Pope as 7 to 1, the lead position, but close to his rivals on the liberal wing of the Church. In April 2005, before his election as Pope, he was identified as one of the 100 most influential people in the world by time. While Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, Ratzinger repeatedly stated he would like to retire to his house in the Bavarian village of Pentling near Regensburg and dedicate himself to writing books. At the conclave, it was, if not Ratzinger, who? And as they came to know him, the question became, why not Ratzinger? On 19 April 2005, he was elected on the second day after four ballots. Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor described the final vote. It's very solemn when you go up one by one to put your vote in the urn and you're looking up at the last judgment of Michelangelo. And I still remember vividly the then Cardinal Ratzinger sitting on the edge of his chair. Ratzinger had hoped to retire peacefully and said that, At a certain point, I prayed to God, please don't do this to me. Evidently, this time he didn't listen to me. Before his first appearance on the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica, he was announced by Jorge Medina Estevez, Cardinal Protodeacon of the Catholic Church. Cardinal Medina Estevez first addressed the massive crowd as, Dear est brothers and sisters, in Italian, Spanish, French, German, and English, with each language receiving cheers from the international crowd, before continuing with the traditional Habemus Papam announcement in Latin. At the balcony, Benedict's first words to the crowd, given in Italian before he gave the traditional Urbi et Orbi blessing in Latin, were, Dear brothers and sisters, after the great Pope John Paul II, the cardinals have elected me, a simple, humble laborer in the vineyard of the Lord. The fact that the Lord knows how to work and to act even with insufficient instruments comforts me, and above all I entrust myself to your prayers. In the joy of the risen Lord, confident of his unfailing help, let us move forward. The Lord will help us, and Mary, his most holy mother, will be on our side. Thank you. On 24 April, he celebrated the Papal Inauguration Mass in St. Peter's Square, during which he was invested with the pallium and the Ring of the Fisherman. On 7 May, he took possession of his cathedral church, the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran. <laughs> <laughs> Choice of name Ratzinger chose the pontifical name Benedict, which comes from the Latin word meaning, the Blessed in honor of both Pope Benedict XV and Saint Benedict of Nursia. Pope Benedict XV was Pope during the First World War, during which time he passionately pursued peace between the warring nations. Saint Benedict of Nursia was the founder of the Benedictine monasteries most monasteries of the Middle Ages were of the Benedictine order and the author of the Rule of Saint Benedict, which is still the most influential writing regarding the monastic life of Western Christianity. 
The Pope explained his choice of name during his first general audience in St. Peter's Square, on 27 April 2005. Filled with sentiments of awe and thanksgiving, I wish to speak of why I chose the name Benedict. Firstly, I remember Pope Benedict XV, that courageous prophet of peace, who guided the Church through turbulent times of war. In his footsteps I place my ministry in the service of reconciliation and harmony between peoples. Additionally, I recall Saint Benedict of Nursia, co-patron of Europe, whose life evokes the Christian roots of Europe. I ask him to help us all to hold firm to the centrality of Christ in our Christian life. May Christ always take first place in our thoughts and actions. Topic. Tone of papacy During his inaugural Mass, the previous custom of every cardinal submitting to the Pope was replaced by having twelve people, including cardinals, clergy, religious, a married couple and their child, and newly confirmed people, greet him. The cardinals had formally sworn their obedience upon his election, he began using an open-topped papal car, saying that he wanted to be closer to the people. Pope Benedict continued the tradition of his predecessor John Paul II and baptized several infants in the Sistine Chapel at the beginning of each year, in his pastoral role as Bishop of Rome. <laughs> Beatifications on 9 May 2005, Benedict XVI began the beatification process for his predecessor, Pope John Paul II. Normally, five years must pass after a person's death before the beatification process can begin. However, in an audience with Pope Benedict, Camillo Ruini, Vicar General of the Diocese of Rome and the official responsible for promoting the cause for canonization of any person who dies within that diocese, cited, "...exceptional circumstances." which suggested that the waiting period could be waived. This happened before, when Pope Paul VI waived the five-year rule and announced beatification processes for his predecessors, Pope Pius XII and Pope John XXIII. Benedict XVI followed this precedent when he waived the five-year rule for John Paul II. The decision was announced on 13 May 2005, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima and the 24th anniversary of the attempt on John Paul II's life. John Paul II often credited Our Lady of Fatima for preserving him on that day. Cardinal Ruini inaugurated the diocesan phase of the cause for beatification in the Lateran Basilica on the 28th of June 2005. The first beatification under the new pope was celebrated on the 14th of May 2005 by Jose Cardinal Sariva Martins, Cardinal Prefect of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints. The new blessed were Mother Marianne Cope and Mother Ascension Nicol Gani. Cardinal Clemens August Graf von Galen was beatified on 9 October 2005. Mariano de la Mata was beatified in November 2006 and Rosa Luvathingel was beatified 3 December of that year, and Fr. Basil Moreau was beatified September 2007. In October 2008, the following beatifications took place, Celestine of the Mother of God, Giuseppina Nicoli, Hendrina Stenmans, Maria Rosa Flesch, Marta Anna Wieska, Michael Sapaco, Petrus Kaib Casu and 187 Companions, Susanna Paz Castillo Ramirez, and Maria Isbel Salvat Romero. On 19 September 2010, during his visit to the United Kingdom, Benedict personally proclaimed the beatification of John Henry Newman. Unlike his predecessor, Benedict XVI delegated the beatification liturgical service to a cardinal. On 29 September 2005, the Congregation for the Causes of Saints issued a communique announcing that henceforth beatifications would be celebrated by a representative of the Pope, usually the prefect of that congregation. Topic. Canonizations Pope Benedict XVI celebrated his first canonizations on 23 October 2005 in St. Peter's Square when he canonized Joseph Bilchevsky, Alberto Hurtado S.J., Zygmunt Gorazdowski, Gaetano Catanoso and Felice Don Nicosia. The canonizations were part of a Mass that marked the conclusion of the General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops and the Year of the Eucharist. Pope Benedict XVI canonized Bishop Rafael Guizar y Valencia, Mother Theodore Guerra, Filippo Smaldin and Rosa Venerini on 15 October 2006.
During his visit to Brazil in 2007, Pope Benedict XVI presided over the canonization of Fray Galvão on the 11th of May, while George Prica, founder of the Malta-based MUSEUM, Simon of Lipnica, Charles of Mount Argus and Marie Eugenie de Jesus were canonized in a ceremony held at the Vatican on the 3rd of June 2007. Prica is the first Maltese saint since the country's conversion to Christianity in 60 AD when St. Paul converted the inhabitants. In October 2008, the following canonizations took place, St. Alfonso of India, Gaetano Errico, Narcissa de Jesus Martillo Moran and Maria Bernarda Butler. In April 2009, he canonized Arcangelo Tadini, Bernardo Tolomei, Nuno Álvarez Pereira, Geltrude Comensoli, and Caterina Volpicelli. In October of the same year he canonized Jean Jugan, Josef Damien de Viester, Zygmunt Chesney Falinski, Francisco Col Gattart and Raphael Arnais Baron. On 17 October 2010, Pope Benedict canonized André Bisset, a French-Canadian, Stanislaw Soltis, a 15th-century Polish priest, Italian nuns Giulia Salzano and Camilla Battista da Varano, Spanish nun Candida Maria de Jesus Cipatria y Barriola and the first Australian saint, Mother Mary MacKillop. On 23 October 2011, Pope Benedict XVI canonized three saints, a Spanish nun Bonifacia Rodriguez y Castro, Italian Archbishop Guido Maria Conforti and Italian priest Luigi Guanella. In December 2011, Pope Benedict formally recognized the validity of the miracles necessary to proceed with the canonizations of Kateri Tekawitha, who would be the first Native American saint, Marianne Cope, a nun working with lepers in what is now the state of Hawaii, Giovanni Battista Piamarda, an Italian priest, Jacques Berthieu a French Jesuit priest and African martyr, Carmen Salas y Baranguerez, a Spanish nun and founder of the Sisters of the Immaculate Conception, Peter Calungsad, a lay catechist and martyr from the Philippines, and Anna Schaefer whose desire to be a missionary was unfulfilled on account of her illness. They were canonized on 21 October 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors of the Church On 7 October 2012, Pope Benedict XVI named Hildegard of Bingen and John of Avila Doctors of the Church, the 34th and 35th individuals so recognized in the history of Christianity. Topic. Curia reform Pope Benedict made only modest changes to the structure of the Roman Curia. In March 2006, he placed both the Pontifical Council for Pastoral Care of Migrants and Itinerant Peoples and the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace under a single president, Cardinal Renato Martino. When Martino retired in 2009, the councils each received its own preside once again. Also in March 2006, the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue was briefly merged into the Pontifical Council for Culture under Cardinal Paul Popard. Those councils maintained their separate officials and staffs while their status and competencies continued unchanged, and in May 2007, interreligious dialogue was restored to its separate status again with its own president. In June 2010, Benedict created the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of the New Evangelization, appointing Archbishop Rhino Fisichella its first president. On 16 January 2013, Pope Benedict transferred responsibility for catechesis from the Congregation for the Clergy to the Pontifical Council for Promoting the New Evangelization. Teachings As Pope, one of Benedict XVI's main roles was to teach about the Catholic faith and the solutions to the problems of discerning and living the faith, a role that he could play well as a former head of the Church's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. The main points of emphasis of his teachings are stated in more detail in Theology of Pope Benedict XVI. Topic. Friendship with Jesus Christ At the conclusion of his first homily as Pope, Benedict referred to both Jesus Christ and John Paul II, citing John Paul II's well-known words, Do not be afraid. Open wide the doors for Christ. Benedict XVI said, Are we not perhaps all afraid in some way? If we let Christ enter fully into our lives, if we open ourselves totally to him, are we not afraid that he might take something away from us? And once again the Pope said, No. If we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful and great. No. 
Only in this friendship do we experience beauty and liberation. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Yes, open, open wide the doors to Christ, and you will find true life. Friendship with Jesus Christ is a frequent theme of his preaching. He stressed that on this intimate friendship, everything depends. He also said, we are all called to open ourselves to this friendship with God. Speaking to him as to a friend, the only one who can make the world both good and happy. That is all we have to do is put ourselves at his disposal. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 is an extremely important message. It is a message that helps to overcome what can be considered the great temptation of our time, the claim, that after the Big Bang, God withdrew from history. Thus, in his book Jesus of Nazareth, his main purpose was to help foster in the reader the growth of a living relationship. With Jesus Christ, he took up this theme in his first encyclical Deus Caritas Est. In his personal explanation and summary of the encyclical, he stated, If friendship with God becomes for us something ever more important and decisive, then we will begin to love those whom God loves and who are in need of us. God wants us to be friends of his friends and we can be so, if we are interiorly close to them. Thus, he said that prayer is urgently needed. It is time to reaffirm the importance of prayer in the face of the activism and the growing secularism of many Christians engaged in charitable work. Topic: <inaudible> Dictatorship of relativism. Continuing what he said in the pre-conclave mass about what he often referred to as the central problem of our faith today. On the 6th of June 2005, Pope Benedict also said Today, a particularly insidious obstacle to the task of education is the massive presence in our society and culture of that relativism which, recognizing nothing as definitive, leaves as the ultimate criterion only the self with its desires. And under the semblance of freedom it becomes a prison for each one, for it separates people from one another, locking each person into his or her own ego. He said that, a dictatorship of relativism, was the core challenge facing the church and humanity. At the root of this problem, he said, is Kant's self-limitation of reason. This, he said, is contradictory to the modern acclamation of science whose excellence is based on the power of reason to know the truth. He said that this self-amputation of reason leads to pathologies of religion such as terrorism and pathologies of science such as ecological disasters. Benedict traced the failed revolutions and violent ideologies of the 20th century to a conversion of partial points of view into absolute guides. He said, absolutizing what is not absolute but relative is called totalitarianism. In an address to a conference of the Diocese of Rome held at the Basilica of St. John Lateran 6 June 2005, Benedict remarked on the issues of same-sex marriage and abortion. The various forms of the dissolution of matrimony today, like free unions, trial marriages and going up to pseudo-matrimonies by people of the same sex, are rather expressions of an anarchic freedom that wrongly passes for true freedom of man. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 from here it becomes all the more clear how contrary it is to human love, to the profound vocation of man and woman, to systematically close their union to the gift of life, and even worse to suppress or tamper with the life that is born. Topic. Christianity as religion according to reason In the discussion with secularism and rationalism, one of Benedict's basic ideas can be found in his address on the crisis of culture in the West, a day before Pope John Paul II died, when he referred to Christianity as the religion of the logos the Greek for word, reason, meaning, or intelligence. He said, from the beginning, Christianity has understood itself as the religion of the Logos, as the religion according to reason. It has always defined men, all men without distinction, as creatures and images of God, proclaiming for them the same dignity. In this connection, the Enlightenment is of Christian origin and it is no accident that it was born precisely and exclusively in the realm of the Christian faith. It was and is the merit of the Enlightenment to have again proposed these original values of Christianity and of having given back to reason its own voice. 
Today, this should be precisely Christianity's philosophical strength, insofar as the problem is whether the world comes from the irrational, and reason is not other than a sub-product, on occasion even harmful of its development, or whether the world comes from reason, and is, as a consequence, its criterion and goal. In the so necessary dialogue between secularists and Catholics, we Christians must be very careful to remain faithful to this fundamental line, to live a faith that comes from the Logos, from creative reason, and that, because of this, is also open to all that is truly rational. Benedict also emphasized that, "...only creative reason, which in the crucified God is manifested as love, can really show us the way." Topic. Encyclicals. Pope Benedict wrote three encyclicals, Deus Caritas est Latin for God is love, Spe Salva, Saved by Hope, and Caritas in Veritate, Love in Truth. In his first encyclical, Deus Caritas est, he said that a human being, created in the image of God who is love, is able to practice love, to give himself to God and others agape, by receiving and experiencing God's love in contemplation. This life of love, according to him, is the life of the saints such as Teresa of Calcutta and the Blessed Virgin Mary, and is the direction Christians take when they believe that God loves them in Jesus Christ. The encyclical contains almost 16,000 words in 42 paragraphs. The first half is said to have been written by Benedict in German, his first language, in the summer of 2005, the second half is derived from uncompleted writings left by his predecessor, Pope John Paul II. The document was signed by Pope Benedict on Christmas Day, 25 December 2005. The encyclical was promulgated a month later in Latin and was translated into English, French, German, Italian, Polish, Portuguese and Spanish. It is the first encyclical to be published since the Vatican decided to assert copyright in the official writings of the Pope. Benedict's second encyclical titled Spe Salva, Saved by Hope, about the virtue of hope, was released on 30 November 2007. His third encyclical titled Caritas in Veritate, Love in Truth, or Charity in Truth, was signed on 29 June 2009, the Feast of Sts. Peter and Paul, and released on 7 July 2009. In it, the Pope continued the Church's teachings on social justice. He condemned the prevalent economic system, where the pernicious effects of sin are evident and called on people to rediscover ethics in business and economic relations at the time of his resignation benedict had completed a draft of a fourth encyclical entitled lumen fidei the light of faith intended to accompany his first two encyclicals to complete a trilogy on the three theological virtues of faith hope and love benedict's successor pope francis completed and published lumen fidei in june 2013 4 months after benedict's retirement and francis's succession Although the encyclical is officially the work of Pope Francis, paragraph 7 of the encyclical explicitly expresses Francis's debt to Benedict. These considerations on faith, in continuity with all that the Church's magisterium has pronounced on this theological virtue, are meant to supplement what Benedict XVI had written in his encyclical letters on charity and hope. He himself had almost completed a first draft of an encyclical on faith. For this I am deeply grateful to him, and as his brother in Christ I have taken up his fine work and added a few contributions of my own. Post-Synodal Apostolic Exhortation Sacramentum Caritatis the Sacrament of Charity, signed the 22nd of February 2007, was released in Latin, Italian, English, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish and Polish. It was made available in various languages 13 March 2007 in Rome. The English edition from Libera Editrice Vaticana is 158 pages. This apostolic exhortation seeks to take up the richness and variety of the reflections and proposals which emerged from the ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops, which was held in 2006. Motu proprio on Tridentine Mass On 7 July 2007, Benedict XVI issued the Motu proprio summorum pontificum, declaring that upon the request of the faithful, celebration of Mass according to the Missal of 1962 commonly known as the Tridentine Mass, was to be more easily permitted. 
Stable groups who previously had to petition their bishop to have a Tridentine Mass may now merely request permission from their local priest. While Summorum Pontificum directs that pastors should provide the Tridentine Mass upon the requests of the faithful, it also allows for any qualified priest to offer private celebrations of the Tridentine Mass, to which the faithful may be admitted if they wish. For regularly scheduled public celebrations of the Tridentine Mass, the permission of the priest in charge of the Church is required. In an accompanying letter, the Pope outlined his position concerning questions about the new guidelines. As there were fears that the move would entail a reversal of the Second Vatican Council, Benedict emphasized that the Tridentine Mass would not detract from the Council, and that the Mass of Paul VI would still be the norm and priests were not permitted to refuse to say the Mass in that form. He pointed out that use of Tridentine Mass was never juridically abrogated and, consequently, in principle, was always permitted." The letter also decried, "...deformations of the liturgy because in many places celebrations were not faithful to the prescriptions of the new Missal," as the Second Vatican Council was wrongly seen, "...as authorizing or even requiring creativity." Mentioning his own experience, the Pope considered that allowing the Tridentine Mass to those who request it was a means to prevent or heal schism, stating that, on occasions in history, "...not enough was done by the Church's leaders to maintain or regain reconciliation and unity," and that this, "...imposes an obligation on us today, to make every effort to enable for all those who truly desire unity to remain in that unity or to attain it anew." Many feel the decree aimed at ending the schism between the Holy See and traditionalist groups such as the Society of St. Pius X Cardinal Dario Castrolan Hoyos, the president of the Pontifical Commission established for the purpose of facilitating full ecclesial communion of those associated with that society, stated that the decree, "...opened the door for their return." Bishop Bernard Fillet, superior general of the SSPX, expressed, deep gratitude to the Sovereign Pontiff for this great spiritual benefit". <inaudible> Unicity and salvific universality of the Catholic Church Near the end of June 2007, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith issued a document approved by Benedict XVI. Because some contemporary theological interpretations of Vatican II's ecumenical intent had been erroneous or ambiguous and had prompted confusion and doubt, the document has been seen as restating key sections of a 2000 text the Pope wrote when he was prefect of the Congregation, Dominus Iesus. Topic: <laughs> Consumerism. Benedict XVI condemned excessive consumerism, especially among youth. He stated in December 2007 that, "...adolescents, youths and even children are easy victims of the corruption of love, deceived by unscrupulous adults who, lying to themselves and to them, draw them into the dead-end streets of consumerism." In June 2009, he blamed outsourcing for greater availability of consumer goods which lead to downsizing of social security systems. Topic. Ecumenism and interfaith dialogue Topic. Other Christian denominations Speaking at his weekly audience in St. Peter's Square on 7 June 2006, Pope Benedict asserted that Jesus himself had entrusted the leadership of the Church to his Apostle Peter. Peter's responsibility thus consists of guaranteeing the communion with Christ. Let us pray so that the primacy of Peter, entrusted to poor human beings, may always be exercised in this original sense desired by the Lord, so that it will be increasingly recognized in its true meaning by brothers who are still not in communion with us." Also in 2006, Benedict met Rowan Williams, Archbishop of Canterbury and spiritual head of the Anglican Communion. In their common declaration, they highlighted the previous 40 years of dialogue between Catholics and Anglicans while also acknowledging serious obstacles to our ecumenical progress. Benedict also acknowledged the Lutheran Church, saying that he has had friends in that denomination. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Judaism. When Benedict ascended to the papacy, his election was welcomed by the Anti-Defamation League who noted his great sensitivity to Jewish history and the Holocaust. 
However, his election received a more reserved response from the United Kingdom's chief rabbi Jonathan Sachs, who hoped that Benedict would continue along the path of Pope John XXIII and Pope John Paul II in working to enhance relations with the Jewish people and the State of Israel. The Foreign Minister of Israel also offered more tentative praise, though the minister believed that, "...this pope, considering his historical experience, will be especially committed to an uncompromising fight against antisemitism." Critics have accused Benedict's papacy of insensitivity towards Judaism. The two most prominent instances were the expansion of the use of the Tridentine Mass and the lifting of the excommunication on four bishops from the Society of St. Pius X in the Good Friday service, the traditional Mass rubrics include a prayer that asks God to lift the veil so that Jews may be delivered from their darkness. This prayer has historically been contentious in Judaic-Catholic relations and several groups saw the restoration of the Tridentine Mass as problematic. Among those whose excommunications were lifted was Bishop Richard Williamson, an outspoken historical revisionist sometimes interpreted as a Holocaust denier. The lifting of his excommunication led critics to charge that the Pope was condoning his historical revisionist views. <inaudible> Islam Pope Benedict's relations with Islam were strained at times. On 12 September 2006 he delivered a lecture which touched on Islam at the University of Regensburg in Germany. He had served there as a professor of theology before becoming Pope, and his lecture was entitled Faith, Reason and the University — Memories and Reflections." The lecture received much attention from political and religious authorities. Many Islamic politicians and religious leaders registered their protest against what they labeled an insulting mischaracterization of Islam, although his focus was aimed towards the rationality of religious violence, and its effect on the religion. Muslims were particularly offended by this passage that the Pope quoted in his speech, Show me just what Muhammad brought that was new and there you will find things only evil and inhuman, such as his command to spread by the sword the faith he preached. The passage originally appeared in the dialogue held with a certain Persian, the worthy Mutarizes, in Anakara of Galatia written in 1391 as an expression of the views of the Byzantine emperor Manuel II Paleologus, one of the last Christian rulers before the fall of Constantinople to the Muslim Ottoman Empire, on such issues as forced conversion, holy war, and the relationship between faith and reason. According to the German text, the Pope's original comment was that the Emperor addresses his interlocutor in an astoundingly harsh to a surprisingly harsh way. When did er sich in Erstonlik Schroffer, uns überraschend Schroffer form? Pope Benedict apologized for any offense he had caused and made a point of visiting Turkey, a predominantly Muslim country, and praying in its blue mosque. Benedict planned on 5 March 2008, to meet with Muslim scholars and religious leaders autumn 2008 at a Catholic Muslim seminar in Rome. That meeting, the first meeting of the Catholic Muslim Forum, was held from 4 to 6 November 2008. On 9 May 2009, Benedict visited the King Hussein Mosque, Amman, Jordan where he was addressed by Prince Ghazi bin Muhammad. Tibetan Buddhism The Dalai Lama congratulated Pope Benedict XVI upon his election, and visited him in October 2006 in the Vatican City. In 2007, China was accused of using its political influence to stop a meeting between the Pope and the Dalai Lama. <inaudible> Indigenous American beliefs while visiting Brazil in May 2007, the Pope sparked controversy by saying that native populations had been silently longing for the Christian faith brought to South America by colonizers. The Pope continued, stating that, the proclamation of Jesus and of his gospel did not at any point involve an alienation of the pre Columbus cultures, nor was it the imposition of a foreign culture. The then president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez demanded an apology, and an indigenous organization in Ecuador issued a response which stated that, "...representatives of the Catholic Church of those times, with honorable exceptions, were accomplices, deceivers and beneficiaries of one of the most horrific genocides of all humanity." Later, the Pope, speaking Italian, said at a weekly audience that it was, 
not possible to forget the suffering and the injustices inflicted by colonizers against the indigenous population, whose fundamental human rights were often trampled." <inaudible> Hinduism While visiting the United States on 17 April 2008, Benedict met with International Society for Krishna Consciousness representative Radhika Ramana Dasa, a noted Hindu scholar and disciple of Hanumat Prashaka Swami. On behalf of the Hindu American community, Radhika Ramana Dasa presented a gift of an Om symbol to Benedict. <laughs> Apostolic ministry As pontiff, Benedict XVI carried out numerous apostolic activities including journeys across the world and in the Vatican. Benedict traveled extensively during the first three years of his papacy. In addition to his travels within Italy, Pope Benedict XVI made two visits to his homeland, Germany, one for World Youth Day and another to visit the towns of his childhood. He also visited Poland and Spain, where he was enthusiastically received. His visit to Turkey, an overwhelmingly Muslim nation, was initially overshadowed by the controversy about a lecture he had given at Regensburg. His visit was met by nationalist and Islamic protesters and was placed under unprecedented security measures. However, the trip went ahead and Benedict made a joint declaration with ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew I in an attempt to begin to heal the rift between the Catholic and Orthodox churches. In 2007, Pope Benedict visited Brazil in order to address the bishops' conference there and canonize Friar Antonio Galvão, an 18th-century Franciscan. In June 2007, Benedict made a personal pilgrimage and pastoral visit to Assisi, the birthplace of St. Francis. In September, Benedict undertook a three-day visit to Austria, during which he joined Vienna's chief rabbi, Paul Chaim Eisenberg, in a memorial to the 65,000 Viennese Jews who perished in Nazi death camps. During his stay in Austria, he also celebrated Mass at the Marian Shrine Mariazel and visited Heiligenkreuz Abbey. In April 2008, Pope Benedict XVI made his first visit to the United States since becoming Pope. He arrived in Washington, D.C. where he was formally received at the White House and met privately with U.S. President George W. Bush. While in Washington, the Pope addressed representatives of U.S. Catholic universities, met with leaders of other world religions, and celebrated Mass at the Washington Nationals baseball stadium with 47,000 people. The Pope also met privately with victims of sexual abuse by priests. The Pope traveled to New York where he addressed the United Nations General Assembly. Also while in New York, the Pope celebrated Mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral, met with disabled children and their families, and attended an event for Catholic youth, where he addressed some 25,000 young people in attendance. On the final day of the Pope's visit, he visited the World Trade Center site and later celebrated Mass at Yankee Stadium. In July 2008, the Pope traveled to Australia to attend World Youth Day 2008 in Sydney. On 19 July, in St. Mary's Cathedral, he made an apology for child sex abuse perpetrated by the clergy in Australia. On 13 September 2008, at an outdoor Paris Mass attended by 250,000 people, Pope Benedict XVI condemned the modern materialism, the world's love of power, possessions and money as a modern-day plague, comparing it to paganism. In 2009, he visited Africa Cameroon and Angola for the first time as Pope. During his visit, he suggested that altering sexual behavior was the answer to Africa's AIDS crisis, and urged Catholics to reach out and convert believers in sorcery. He visited the Middle East Jordan, Israel and Palestine in May 2009. Pope Benedict's main arena for pastoral activity was the Vatican itself, his Christmas and Easter homilies and Urbi et Orbi are delivered from St. Peter's Basilica. The Vatican is also the only regular place where Benedict XVI traveled via motor without the protective bulletproof case common to most Popemobiles. Despite the more secure setting, Pope Benedict was victim to security risks several times inside Vatican City. On Wednesday 6 June 2007 during his general audience a man leapt across a barrier, evaded guards and nearly mounted the Pope's vehicle, although he was stopped and Benedict seemed to be unaware of the event. On Thursday, 24 December 2009, while Pope Benedict was proceeding to the altar to celebrate Christmas Eve Mass at St. Peter's Basilica, a woman later identified as 25-year-old Susanna Maiolo, who holds Italian and Swiss citizenships, jumped the barrier and grabbed the Pope by his vestments and pulled him to the ground. 
The 82-year-old fell but was assisted to his feet and he continued to proceed towards the altar to celebrate Mass. Roger Echegaray, 87, the vice dean of the College of Cardinals, fell also and suffered a hip fracture. Italian police reported that the woman had previously attempted to accost the Pope at the previous Christmas Eve Mass, but was prevented from doing so. In his homily, Pope Benedict forgave Susanna Maiolo and urged the world to wake up from selfishness and petty affairs, and find time for God and spiritual matters. Between 17 and 18 April, Pope Benedict made an apostolic journey to the Republic of Malta. Following meetings with various dignitaries on his first day on the island, 50,000 people gathered in a drizzle for papal mass on the granaries in Floriana. The Pope also met with the Maltese youth at the Valletta waterfront, where an estimated 10,000 young people turned up to greet him. During his visit the Pope was moved to tears while expressing his shame at cases of abuse on the island during a 20-minute meeting with victims. Topic. Sexual abuse in the Catholic Church Prior to 2001, the primary responsibility for investigating allegations of sexual abuse and disciplining perpetrators rested with the individual dioceses. In 2001, Ratzinger convinced John Paul II to put the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in charge of all investigations and policies surrounding sexual abuse in order to combat such abuse more efficiently. According to John L. Allen, Jr., Ratzinger in the following years, "...acquired a familiarity with the contours of the problem that virtually no other figure in the Catholic Church can claim," and Driven by that encounter with what he would later refer to as filth in the church, Ratzinger seems to have undergone something of a conversion experience throughout 2003-04. From that point forward, he and his staff seemed driven by a convert's zeal to clean up the mess. In his role as head of the CDF, he led important changes made in church law, the inclusion in canon law of Internet offenses against children, the extension of child abuse offenses to include the sexual abuse of all under 18, the case-by-case -case waiving of the statute of limitation and the establishment of a fast-track dismissal from the clerical state for offenders." As the head of the CDF, Ratzinger developed a reputation for handling these cases. According to Charles J. Shakluna, a former prosecutor handling sexual abuse cases, "...Cardinal Ratzinger displayed great wisdom and firmness in handling those cases, also demonstrating great courage in facing some of the most difficult and thorny cases, sign exception personarum without exceptions." One of the cases Ratzinger pursued involved Father Marcial Miquel de Galado, a Mexican priest and founder of the Legion of Christ, who had been accused repeatedly of sexual abuse. Biographer Andrea Tornelli suggested that Cardinal Ratzinger had wanted to take action against Marcial Miquel de Galado, but that John Paul II and other high-ranking officials, including several cardinals and notably the Pope's influential secretary Stanislaw Jawiz, prevented him from doing so. According to Jason Berry, Angelo Sodano pressured Cardinal Ratzinger, who was operating on the assumption that the charges were not justified. To halt the proceedings against McKeel in 1999 when McKeel was honored by the Pope in 2004, new accusers came forward and Cardinal Ratzinger took it on himself to authorize an investigation of McKeel. After Ratzinger became Pope he began proceedings against McKeel and the Legion of Christ that forced McKeel out of active service in the Church. On 1 May 2010 the Vatican issued a statement denouncing Maciel's very serious and objectively immoral acts which were confirmed by incontrovertible testimonies and represent true crimes and manifest a life without scruples or authentic religious sentiment. Pope Benedict also said he would appoint a special commission to examine the Legionaries Constitution and open an investigation into its lay affiliate Regnum Christi. Cardinal Christoph Schonborn explained that Ratzinger made entirely clear efforts not to cover things up but to tackle and investigate them. This was not always met with approval in the Vatican. 
According to Schonborn, Cardinal Ratzinger had pressed John Paul II to investigate Hans Hermann Grower, an Austrian cardinal and friend of John Paul accused of sexual abuse, resulting in Grower's resignation. In March 2010, the Pope sent a pastoral letter to the Catholic Church in Ireland addressing cases of sexual abuse by Catholic priests to minors, expressing sorrow, and promising changes in the way accusations of abuse are dealt with. Victim groups claim the letter failed to clarify if secular law enforcement has priority over canon law confidentiality pertaining to internal investigation of abuse allegations. The Pope then promised to introduce measures that would safeguard young people in the future and bring to justice priests who were responsible for abuse. In April, the Vatican issued guidelines on how existing church law should be implemented. The guideline dictates that civil law concerning reporting of crimes should always be followed. The guideline was intended to follow the norms established by U.S. bishops, but it does not require the reporting of allegations or crimes where reporting is not required by law. Topic. Attire Pope Benedict XVI reintroduced several papal garments which had fallen into disuse. Pope Benedict XVI resumed the use of the traditional red papal shoes, which had been used since Roman times by popes but which had fallen into disuse during the pontificate of Pope John Paul II. Contrary to the initial speculation of the press that the shoes had been made by the Italian fashion house Prada, the Vatican announced that the shoes were provided by the Pope's personal shoemaker. On only one occasion, 21 December 2005, the Pope wore the Camoro, the traditional red papal hat usually worn in the winter. It had not been seen since the pontificate of Pope John XXIII 1958 On 6 September 2006, the Pope began wearing the red Capello Romano also called a Saturno, a wide-brimmed hat for outdoor use. Rarely used by John Paul II, it was more widely worn by his predecessors. The journalist Charlotte Allen describes Benedict as the Pope of Aesthetics. He has reminded a world that looks increasingly ugly and debased that there is such a thing as the beautiful whether it's embodied in a sonata or an altarpiece or an embroidered cope or the cut of a cassock and that earthly beauty ultimately communicates a beauty that is beyond earthly things. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Health Prior to his election as Pope in 2005, Ratzinger had hoped to retire on account of age related health problems, a long held desire to have free time to write, and the retirement age for bishops 75, and submitted his resignation as Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith three times, but continued at his post in obedience to the wishes of Pope John Paul II. In September 1991, Ratzinger suffered a hemorrhagic stroke, which slightly impaired his eyesight temporarily but he recovered completely. This was never officially made public. The official news was that Ratzinger had fallen and struck his head against a radiator but was an open secret known to the conclave that elected him Pope. Following his election in April 2005 there were several rumors about the Pope's health, but none of them were confirmed. Early in his pontificate Benedict XVI predicted a short reign, which led to concerns about his health. In May 2005 the Vatican announced that he had suffered another mild stroke. French Cardinal Philippe Barberin said that since the first stroke Ratzinger had been suffering from an age-related heart condition, for which he was on medication. In late November 2006 Vatican insiders told the international press that the Pope had had a routine examination of the heart. A few days later an unconfirmed rumor emerged that Pope Benedict had undergone an operation in preparation for an eventual bypass operation, but this rumor was only published by a small left-wing Italian newspaper and was never confirmed by any Vatican insider. On the 17th of July 2009, Benedict was hospitalized after falling and breaking his right wrist while on vacation in the Alps. His injuries were reported to be minor. Following the announcement of his resignation, the Vatican revealed that Pope Benedict had been fitted with a pacemaker while he was still a cardinal, before his election as pope in 2005. The battery in the pacemaker had been replaced three months earlier, a routine procedure, but that did not influence his decision. Currently, Benedict has multiple health problems including high blood pressure and reportedly has fallen out of bed more than once, but the Vatican denies any specific illnesses. Resignation 
On the 11th of February 2013, the Vatican confirmed that Benedict XVI would resign the papacy on the 28th of February 2013 as a result of his advanced age, becoming the first pope to resign since Gregory XII in 1415. At the age of 85 years and 318 days on the effective date of his retirement, he was the fourth oldest person to hold the office of pope. The move was unexpected. In modern times, all popes have held office until death. Benedict was the first pope to resign without external pressure since Celestine V in 1294. In his declaration of the 10th of February 2013, Benedict resigned as Bishop of Rome, successor of Saint Peter. In a statement, Benedict cited his deteriorating strength and the physical and mental demands of the papacy. Addressing his cardinals in Latin, Benedict gave a brief statement announcing his resignation. He also declared that he would continue to serve the Church, through a life dedicated to prayer. According to a statement from the Vatican, the timing of the resignation was not caused by any specific illness but was to avoid that exhausting rush of Easter engagements. After two weeks of ceremonial farewells, the Pope left office at the appointed time and seed vacanti was declared. On the eve of the first anniversary of Benedict's resignation he wrote to La Stampa to deny speculation he had been forced to step down. There isn't the slightest doubt about the validity of my resignation from the Petrine ministry. He wrote in a letter to the newspaper, The only condition for the validity is the full freedom of the decision. Speculation about its invalidity is simply absurd," he wrote. Pope Emeritus On the morning of 28 February 2013, Pope Benedict met with the full College of Cardinals and in the early afternoon flew by helicopter to the papal summer residence of Castel Gandolfo. He stayed there until refurbishment was completed on his retirement home, the Mater Ecclesia Monastery in the Vatican Gardens near St. Peter's, formerly home to twelve nuns, where he moved on 2 May 2013. To protect it, there is a thick hedge and a fence. It has a garden of more than 2,000 square meters that overlooks the monastery and is adjacent to the current Pope's Garden. A few tens of meters away is the building of Vatican Radio. After his resignation, Benedict XVI retained his papal name rather than reverting to his birth name. He continued to wear the white cassock but without the pellegrina or the fascia. He ceased wearing red papal shoes. Benedict returned his official fisherman's ring, which is usually destroyed by Vatican officials on the death of a pope to prevent documents being counterfeited. According to a Vatican spokesman, Benedict spent his first day as Pope Emeritus with Archbishop Georg Ganswein, the prefect of the papal household. In the monastery, the Pope Emeritus does not live a cloistered life, but studies and writes. The Pope Emeritus joined his successor several months after his election at the unveiling of a new statue of St. Michael the Archangel. The inscription on the statue, according to Cardinal Giovanni Lagello, has the coat of arms of the two popes to symbolize the fact that statue was commissioned by Benedict XVI, and consecrated by Francis. Benedict XVI made his first public appearance after his resignation at St. Peter's Basilica on of February 2014 to attend the first papal consistory of his successor Pope Francis. Benedict XVI, who entered the basilica through a discreet entrance, was seated in a row with several other cardinals. He doffed his zucchetto when Pope Francis came down the nave of St. Peter's Basilica to greet him. He then made an appearance at the canonization mass of Pope John XXIII and Pope John Paul II, greeting the cardinals and Pope Francis. In August 2014, Benedict XVI celebrated mass at the Vatican and met with his former doctoral students, an annual tradition he has kept since the 1970s. He attended the beatification of Pope Paul VI in October 2014. Weeks before this, he joined Pope Francis in St. Peter's Square for an audience with grandparents to honor their importance in society. Benedict wrote the text of a speech, delivered by Archbishop Georg Ganswein, on the occasion of the dedication of the Aula Magna at the Pontifical Urbaniana University to the Pope Emeritus. A gesture of gratitude for what he has done for the Church as a conciliar expert, with his teaching as professor, as prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, and, finally, the Magisterium. The ceremony took place on Tuesday, the 21st of October 2014, during the opening of the academic year. Benedict XVI attended the Consistory for New Cardinals in February 2015, greeting Pope Francis at the beginning of the celebration. In 2015, Benedict XVI, who now prefers to be known as 
Father Benedict spent the summer at Castel Gandolfo and participated in two public events. Pope Francis invited Benedict XVI to spend some time in Castel Gandolfo in the month of July and Benedict accepted. Father Lombardi told journalists on 15 June. Benedict XVI remained there for two weeks. While in Castel Gandolfo, Benedict XVI received two honorary doctorates, given to him by Krakow's Cardinal Stanislaw Jewiz, John Paul II's longtime aide, from the Pontifical University of John Paul II and the Krakow Academy of Music. In his reception address, Benedict XVI paid homage to his predecessor, John Paul II, the Joseph Ratzinger Benedict XVI Roman Library. At the Pontifical Teutonic College was announced in April 2015 and is scheduled to open to scholars in November 2015. The library section dedicated to his life and thought is being catalogued. It includes books by or about him and his studies, many donated by Benedict XVI himself. Benedict XVI, in August 2015, submitted a handwritten card to act as a testimony to the cause of canonization of Pope John Paul I. In March 2016, he gave an interview expressing his views on mercy and endorsing Pope Francis's stress on mercy in his pastoral practice. Also that month, a Vatican spokesman stated that Benedict XVI was slowly, serenely fading in his physical health, although his mental capacity remained perfectly lucid. The Pope Emeritus was honored by the Roman Curia and Pope Francis in 2016 at a special audience, honoring the 65th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood. Benedict XVI, later that year in November, did not attend the consistory for new cardinals, though he did meet with them and Pope Francis at his residence after the consistory had taken place. On 28 June 2017, the Pope Emeritus received the newly created cardinals in his chapel and spoke with all of them in their native tongue, while also remarking that they were from the four continents, the whole church. He further said that the Lord wins in the end and thank you all. He said, before giving them his blessing, in July 2017, Benedict XVI sent a message through his private secretary Monsignor Ganswine for the occasion of the funeral of Cardinal Joachim Meissner, who had suddenly passed away while on vacation in Germany. In his message, the Pope Emeritus referred to Meissner as a passionate shepherd and pastor, who found it difficult to leave his post. The former pope also said that he had spoken on the telephone with Meissner the day before the latter died and related that Meissner was grateful to be on vacation after having been present for the beatification of Theophilius Matulionis in Vilnius. In November 2017, images emerged on the Facebook page of the Bishop of Passau Stefan Oster of Benedict XVI with a black eye. The bishop and author Peter Seewald visited the former pope on 26 October since the pair were presenting Benedict XVI with the new book Benedict XVI. 16th, the German Pope which the Passau Diocese created. The former Pope suffered the hematoma earlier after having slipped. Topic. Titles and styles The official style of the former Pope in English is His Holiness Benedict XVI, Supreme Pontiff Emeritus or Pope Emeritus. Less formally he is referred to as Emeritus Pope or Roman Pontifex Emeritus. As Pope, his rarely used full title was, His Holiness Benedict XVI, Bishop of Rome, Vicar of Jesus Christ, Successor of the Prince of the Apostles, Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church, Primate of Italy, Archbishop and Metropolitan of the Roman Province, Sovereign of the Vatican City State, Servant of the Servants of God, the best known title, that of Pope does not appear in the official list of titles, but is commonly used in the titles of documents, and appears, in abbreviated form, in their signatures as P.P. Standing for Papa. Pope. Before 1 March 2006, the list of titles also used to contain that of a Patriarch of the West, which traditionally appeared in that list of titles before Primate of Italy. The title of Patriarch of the West was first introduced into the Papal Court in 1870 at the time of the First Vatican Council in the publication Annuario Pontificio and was removed in the 2006 edition. Pope Benedict chose to remove the title at a time when discussions with the Orthodox churches have centered on the issue of papal primacy. Topic. Positions on moral and political issues Topic. Birth control and HIV, AIDS 
In 2005, the Pope listed several ways to combat the spread of HIV, including chastity, fidelity in marriage and anti-poverty efforts. He also rejected the use of condoms. The alleged Vatican investigation of whether there are any cases when married persons may use condoms to protect against the spread of infections surprised many Catholics in the wake of John Paul II's consistent refusal to consider condom use in response to AIDS. However, the Vatican has since stated that no such change in the Church's teaching can occur. Time also reported in its edition of 30 April 2006 that the Vatican's position remains what it always has been with Vatican officials. Flatly dismiss ing reports that the Vatican is about to release a document that will condone any condom use. In March 2009, the Pope stated, I would say that this problem of AIDS cannot be overcome merely with money, necessary though it is. If there is no human dimension, if Africans do not help, the problem cannot be overcome by the distribution of prophylactics, on the contrary, they increase it. The solution must have two elements, firstly, bringing out the human dimension of sexuality, that is to say a spiritual and human renewal that would bring with it a new way of behaving towards others, and secondly, true friendship offered above all to those who are suffering, a willingness to make sacrifices and to practice self-denial, to be alongside the suffering. In November 2010, in a book-length interview, the Pope, using the example of male prostitutes, stated that the use of condoms, with the intention of reducing the risk of HIV infection, may be an indication that the prostitute is intending to reduce the evil connected with his immoral activity. In the same interview, the Pope also reiterated the traditional teaching of the Church that condoms are not seen as a real or moral solution to the HIV, AIDS pandemic. Further, in December 2010, the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith explained that the Pope's statement did not constitute a legitimization of either contraception or prostitution, which remains gravely immoral. Topic. Homosexuality During his time as Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith CDF, Benedict XVI made several efforts to tackle the issue of homosexuality within the Church and the wider world. In 1986 the CDF sent a letter to all bishops entitled, On the Pastoral Care of Homosexual Persons. The letter condemned a liberal interpretation of the earlier CDF document declaration on certain questions concerning sexual ethics, which had led to a benign attitude to the homosexual condition itself. On the pastoral care of homosexual persons clarified that the Church's position on homosexuality was that, although the particular inclination of the homosexual person is not a sin, it is a more or less strong tendency ordered toward an intrinsic moral evil, and thus the inclination itself must be seen as an objective disorder. However the document also condemned homophobic attacks and violence, stating that, it is deplorable that homosexual persons have been and are the object of violent malice in speech or in action. Such treatment deserves condemnation from the Church's pastors wherever it occurs." In 1992, he again approved CDF documents declaring that homosexual "...inclination itself must be seen as an objective disorder," and extended this principle to civil law. "...sexual orientation." The document said, was not equivalent to race or ethnicity, and it declared that it was, "...not unjust discrimination to take sexual orientation into account." On of December 2008, the Pope gave an end-of-year message to the Roman Curia in which he talked about gender and the important distinction between men and women. The Pope said that the Church viewed the distinction as central to human nature, and, "...asks that this order of creation be respected." The Church, he said, must protect man from self-destruction," he said. Something like a human ecology was needed, adding, "...rain forests deserve indeed to be protected, but no less so does man." He attacked gender theories which he described as man's attempt at self-emancipation from creation and the creator. LGBT groups such as the Italian Arsage and German LSVD have announced that they found the Pope's comments homophobic. Aurelio Mancuso, head of Arsage, saying, A divine program for men and women is out of line with nature, where the roles are not so clear. Canadian author Daniel Gothrop, in a critical biography, The Trial of Pope Benedict, said that the Pope blamed homosexuality for a problem the Church had willingly enabled for hundreds of years. 
Father Federico Lombardi, a Vatican spokesman, claimed the Pope had not wished specifically to attack people with homosexual inclinations, and had not mentioned gays or lesbians in his text. Father Lombardi insisted, however, that there had been an overreaction to the Pope's remarks. He was speaking more generally about gender theories which overlook the fundamental difference in creation between men and women and focus instead on cultural conditioning. Nevertheless, the remarks were interpreted as a call to save mankind from homosexuals and transsexuals. Topic: <laughs> Same-sex marriage. During a 2012 Christmas speech, the Pope made remarks about the present-day interpretation of the notion of gender. He stated that, "...sex is no longer a given element of nature, that man has to accept and personally make sense of, it is a social role that we choose for ourselves." And, "...the words of the creation account." Male and female he created them, "...gen 127 no longer apply." Although he didn't mention the topic, his words were interpreted by news media as denunciations of same-sex marriage, with some sources adding that Benedict would have called it a threat to world peace similar to abortion and euthanasia. In March 2012, he stated that heterosexual marriages should be defended from "...every possible misrepresentation of their true nature." Topic. International relations Topic. Migrants and refugees In a message released 14 November 2006, during a Vatican press conference for the 2007 annual observance of World Day for Migrants and Refugees, the Pope urged the ratification of international conventions and policies that defend all migrants, including refugees, exiles, evacuees and internally displaced persons. The Church encourages the ratification of the international legal instruments that aim to defend the rights of migrants, refugees and their families." The Pope said, "...much is already being done for the integration of the families of immigrants, although much still remains to be done." Pope Benedict also promoted various UN events, such as World Refugee Day, on which he offered up special prayers for refugees and called for the international community to do more to secure refugees' human rights. He also called on Catholic communities and organizations to offer them concrete help. In 2015, it was reported that the Pope was "...praying for migrants and refugees." from Syria. China. In 2007, Benedict sent a letter at Easter to Catholics in China that could have wide-ranging implications for the Church's relationship with China's leadership. The letter provides long-requested guidance to Chinese bishops on how to respond to illicitly ordained bishops, as well as how to strengthen ties with the Patriotic Association and the Communist government. Korea on 13 November 2006, Benedict said that the dispute over the North Korea nuclear weapons program should be resolved through negotiations. In his first public comment on the security issue, a news report said, The Holy See encourages bilateral or multilateral negotiations, convinced that the solution must be sought through peaceful means and in respect for agreements taken by all sides to obtain the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Benedict was talking to the new Japanese ambassador to the Vatican. Topic: <inaudible> Turkey. In a 2004 Le Figaro interview, Ratzinger said that Turkey, which is demographically Muslim but governmentally secular by virtue of its state constitution, should seek its future in an association of Muslim nations rather than the European Union, which Ratzinger stated has Christian roots. He said Turkey had always been in permanent contrast to Europe and that linking it to Europe would be a mistake." Later visiting the country to "...reiterate the solidarity between the cultures." It was reported that he made a counter-statement backing Turkey's bid to join the EU. Prime Minister of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan, said that the Pope told him in their meeting that while the Vatican seeks to stay out of politics it desires Turkey's membership in the EU. However, the common declaration of Pope Benedict XVI and Patriarch Bartholomew I of Constantinople implied that support for Turkey's membership in the European Union would be contingent on the establishment of religious freedom in Turkey, 
In every step towards unification, minorities must be protected, with their cultural traditions and the distinguishing features of their religion. The Declaration also reiterates Pope Benedict XVI's a call for Europe to preserve its Christian roots. Israel In May 2009, he visited Israel. This was the third papal visit to the Holy Land, the previous ones being made by Pope Paul VI in 1964 and Pope John Paul II in 2000. Vietnam. Pope Benedict XVI and Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Dung met at the Vatican on 25 January 2007 in a new and important step towards establishing diplomatic ties. The Pope met with President Nguyen Minh Triet on of December 2009. Vatican officials called the meeting, a significant stage in the progress of bilateral relations with Vietnam. <laughs> Global economy. In 2009, the Pope intervened in global economic and political affairs with his third encyclical, Charity in Truth Latin Caritas in Veritate, which can be viewed on the Vatican's website. This document set out the then reigning Pope's position on the case for worldwide redistribution of wealth in considerable detail and goes on to discuss the environment, migration, terrorism, sexual tourism, bioethics, energy and population issues. The Financial Times reported that Benedict XVI's advocacy for a fairer redistribution of wealth helped set the agenda for the 2009 July G8 summit, also included in Charity in Truth as advocacy for tax choice. One possible approach to development aid would be to apply effectively what is known as fiscal subsidiarity, allowing citizens to decide how to allocate a portion of the taxes they pay to the state. Provided it does not degenerate into the promotion of special interests, this can help to stimulate forms of welfare solidarity from below, with obvious benefits in the area of solidarity for development as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear energy Pope Benedict XVI called for nuclear disarmament. At the same time, he supported the peaceful use of nuclear energy as a tool for development and the fight against poverty. In his message for the 50th anniversary of the founding of the International Atomic Energy Agency, he confirmed, "...the Holy See, fully approving of the IAEA's goal, has been a member from the organization's foundation and continues to support its activity." <laughs> Interests Benedict is known to be deeply interested in classical music, and is an accomplished pianist. The Pontiff Emeritus' favorite composer is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, of whose music the Pope said, "...his music is by no means just entertainment, it contains the whole tragedy of human existence." Benedict also stated that Mozart's music affected him greatly as a young man and "...deeply penetrated his soul." Benedict's favorite works of music are Mozart's clarinet concerto and clarinet quintet. He recorded an album of contemporary classical music in which he sings and recites prayers to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The album was set for release on 30 November 2009. He is also known to be fond of cats. As Cardinal Ratzinger he was known, according to former neighbors, to look after stray cats in his neighborhood. A book called Joseph and Chico, A Cat Recounts the Life of Pope Benedict XVI was published in 2007 which told the story of the Pope's life from the feline Chico's perspective. This story was inspired by an orange tabby pentling cat, which belonged to the family next door. During his trip to Australia for World Youth Day in 2008 the media reported that festival organizers lent the Pope a grey cat called Bella in order to keep him company during his stay. Topic. Social networking In December 2012, the Vatican announced that Pope Benedict XVI had joined social networking website Twitter, under the handle at Pontifex. His first tweet was made on 12 December and was, Dear friends, I am pleased to get in touch with you through Twitter. Thank you for your generous response. I bless all of you from my heart. On 28 February 2013, the day he retired, the tweets were deleted, and at Pontifex read, Seed Vacanti. Pope Francis eventually took control of the at Pontifex account upon his election. 
Topic: Honors and awards. As Pope, Benedict was Grand Master of the following orders Supreme Order of Christ, Order of the Golden Spur, Order of Pius IX, Equestrian Order of St. Gregory the Great and the Order of St. Sylvester. 1977 Grand Cross of the National Order of Merit of the Republic of Ecuador 1977 Knight Grand Cross of the Bavarian Order of Merit 1985 Grand Merit Cross with Star and Sash of the Federal Republic of Germany 1985 Bayerische Verfassungsmedaille Bavarian Constitution Medal in gold 1989 Order of Minerva at the Danuncio University of Chieti Pescara 1989 Augustin B Prize Rome 1989 Karl Valentin Orden Munich 1991 Leopold Kunchik Prize Vienna 1991 Georg von Hertling Medal of Kartellverband Katholischer Deutscher Studentenverein 1992 Grand Decoration of Honor in Gold with Sash for Services to the Republic of Austria 1992 Literature Prize Capri S. Michel in Anna Capri 1992 Premio Internazionale di Cultura Cattolica, Bassano del Grappa 1993 Literary Prize Premio Letterario Basilicata per la Letteratura e Poesia Religiosa Spirituale in Potenza, Italy 1996 Knight of the Bavarian Maximilian Order for Science and Art 1998 Commander of the Legion of Honor France 1999 Bailiff Grand Cross of Honor and Devotion of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta 2002 Liberal Trieste 2004 Literature Prize Capri S. Michel in Anacaprihonorary Doctorates 1984 University of St. Thomas Street. Paul, Minnesota, USA, Honorary Doctor of Human Letters 1986 Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú Pontifical Catholic University of Peru 1987 Catholic University of Eichstätt Ingolstadt 1988 Katolicki Universitet Lubelski Catholic University of Lublin, Poland 1998 University of Navarra Pamplona, Spain 1999 Libera Universita Maria SS Assunta Roma Maria SS Assunta Free University, Rome Honorary Degree in Law 2000 Universitat Rocklowski University of Wrocław, Poland, Honorary Doctor of Theology 2005 Universitia Babes Bolyai in Cluj-Napoca Babes Bolyai University Honorary Citizenships 1987 Pentling, near Regensburg, location of his main German residence 1997 Mark T. L., his birthplace 2005 Tronstein, location of the school and the study seminar he attended 2006 Altading, in Bavaria 2006 Regensburg, worked as a full, later as a visiting, professor 2006 Aschau M. in, started school and received mass for the first time 2007 Titmaning, where he spent part of his childhood 2008 Brixen, where he holidayed several times as a cardinal and as pope 2009 Mariazel, whose sanctuary he visited in 2007 as pope 2009 Intrad in the Aosta Valley, where he spent some of his summer holidays in 2005, 2006 and 2009 2010 Romano Canavis, in Piedmont 2010 Lisbon, honoring his visit to the city on 11-12 May 2010 2010 Phrasing, where he studied, was ordained a priest in 1951, where he served from 1954 to 1957 lecturer at the Philosophical and Theological College and worked from 1977 to 1982 as Archbishop of Munich and Phrasing. 2011 Nats Shabs in South Tyrol, Benedict's grandmother Maria Tauber Pentner and his great-grandmother Elizabeth Maria Tauber both come from Nats Shabs The asteroid 8661 Ratzinger was named in his honor for the role he played in supervising the opening of Vatican archives in 1998 to researchers investigating judicial errors against Galileo and other medieval scientists. The name was proposed by the asteroid's first discoverers, L. D. Schmadl and F. Borngen at Tautenberg. Topic. Arms Topic. Writings Pope Benedict XVI has written 66 books, three encyclicals, and three apostolic exhortations. 
Topic. See also. Pope Benedict XVI portal. Georg Ganswein. Cardinals created by Benedict XVI. List of popes. Papal regalia and insignia, papal attire. Pope Benedict, list of other popes and antipopes using the name Benedict Three Secrets of Fatima, document on the release of the Third Secret of Fatima Dehellenization References Further reading Literature about him Topic. Biographies Topic. Documentaries The Keys of the Kingdom, from John Paul II to Benedict XVI, produced by Vatican Television Center, distributed by HDH Communications, 2006. Topic. External links Profile at the Vatican website. Pope Benedict XVI. Catholic-hierarchy.org. David M. Cheney. Works by or about Pope Benedict XVI in libraries. WorldCat catalog. Papal Transition 2005 web archive from the U.S. Library of Congress. Appearances on C-SPAN. Topic. Encyclicals by Benedict XVI. Deus Caritas Est, Encyclical God is Love Spe Salva, Encyclical in Hope We Were Saved Caritas in Veritate, Encyclical in Charity and Truth